Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel and welcome to a quick vlog style video for today. I just wanted to give you guys an update on the fortress progress that I've been making on the Z. So we have one um, Z lead screw completely done here. This is all assembled with the bearings and pulley in the bottom here. Uh, very happy how it worked out. And I have left an assembly out so uh, you can kind of see how it's working. So we have two bearings here. Um, these are 608 2RS bearings. Um, very, very common, incredibly cheap to grab uh, and you need six of those. And then we have our 40 tooth idler here which has a eight millimeter bore so that it fits on our eight millimeter lead screw. These uh, parts actually worked out perfect the very first time. So if uh, you print this basically lying flat like this, the holes work very well. I'm very happy with that. This is in uh, ABS of course, and I'm doing four walls, 20% infill, and this part is incredibly rigid. So I don't really have any issues with that. I'm not worried about this flexing or anything. You can see we have three mounting holes that mount directly to the 2020 in the corner. So this part here is going to replace the foot mount right here. And then I do have, of course, new panels here so that the lead screw can poke through and it looks all nice and clean like this one here. So I'm very happy with that so far. I do need to start redoing the rear. Um, this one's going to be a complete redo, of course. So I have to remove these panels, throw them away, uh, take these top panels off. I have to slide back the 2020 that's behind here. And then there'll be another 2020 in the back here as well, so that we can mount the third linear rail and then have our lead screw here and have the mounts and stuff like that. So that shouldn't be too bad. Um, Probably what's going to take a little more time is figuring out a, a spot for the stepper so that it's like out of the build volume and uh, have an idler so that I can tension the belt. I still don't know the size of belt that I'm going to be running um, to each actual 20 tooth pulley. But once I have the CAD finished and I have all these parts assembled, I'll be able to figure out what the actual belt size will be. There's generally a lot of different belt sizes available, single loop belts, so shouldn't be too big of a deal. If I have to rearrange some things to make make it fit, that should be fine. I can kind of move out the NEMA motor over into the corner more if I need to have a bigger belt or whatever it might be, but I'm actually very excited to try this. I've never tried the triple Z, but with a single motor, so that should be nice. And then, of course, we're going to have linear rails uh, right here and right here. The bottom of the linear rail is going to attach directly to the 2020 down here. Um, it's not long enough to attach to the top here. So I am going to have a 3D printed mount, but that'll be very rigid. And there's not going to be a whole a lot of weight on the bed. Like I say, we're going to be using the Prusa Mini bed, which is not crazy heavy. Um, but it should be nice and nice, nice and stable um you know it's not going to move in the x and y direction it's going to be very very well supported and i think that uh printing on this printer is going to be quite nice as, as far as printing speed and stuff like that so that's pretty cool there i haven't done anything with expanding the x and y I do have probably like five or six millimeters. I can basically move the belt out to the very edge here. I do have quite a bit of space on the sides. As I shown off before, the belt can definitely come over quite a bit. And then that way I can actually start moving everything over and just get that little bit more of build area as much as I possibly can get. Um, also, I did, thanks for everyone who commented, I did print out uh, the right or the 90 degree angle bed support for the Prusa mini bed, which is perfect. It should have plenty of room. I don't need to make any drastic changes now, which that's a great option. I'm glad that uh, 
I was able to find that. Uh, so thanks everyone for pointing that out. That's going to be a huge help and uh, make things a little bit easier to actually put on this printer. So yeah, I don't think I'll be having this printing, unfortunately, by next Sunday. But I'm hoping the Sunday after that, this will start getting wrapped up here. Um, if anyone is interested in beta testing this printer, I can... Uh, add you to the beta testing group for Fortress. I do want to make sure that it prints well. I'm not too concerned about a lot of the motion parts because these are basically uh, right from the Evo and um, they're not too different. I, I don't really have any issues with with them like working out or anything like that. Like the motor pods are basically the same and, and type thing. But I do have issues with this printer and the panels fitting. Um, I don't know what it is. Uh, the extrusions in the CAD and the extrusions here vary a fair amount and I've had to kind of reprint the panels a couple times. So I want to make sure that the panels will fit on other extrusion frames. These are like super cheap, really crappy uh, extrusions from Amazon. The paint coating on here actually is like so thick that T-nuts don't even fit in here sometimes, which is really dumb. But I have been having some problems with, uh, or I was having some problems with like the holes actually lining up and the gaps being very large and stuff. I know ABS shrinks, but um, it shouldn't be shrinking that much. So I have been compensating basically for the panels. So... I would really like someone else to uh, hopefully just assemble the printer and uh, make sure that the panels are all fitting well. Obviously, I'm going to have to redesign this panel now because I've moved the Y up. So this panel is probably going to be half here and then the other panel on the top will be another half so that they'll clamp both of them together nicely like that. So that should work out pretty good. I also might experiment out with putting a large um, acrylic window here so that there's much less printing. Uh, if you've seen on my Rook Evolution, you can buy like eight by 10 acrylic picture frames, a pack of five of them for very, very cheap. And that would give a nice window on the sides, but it also would cut down in the print time on the panels. Of course, I'm gonna be using one of those on the top and that's how the door will actually be as well. Um, I still got a, I haven't even thought about the front door for this either. So there's definitely some things I need to think about yet. And uh, I'm just trying to take my time going forward and make sure that every printer gets the attention it deserves before I release it and stuff like that. And like with this printer, I want to do more videos on the printer that I'm building um, and before I move on to the next project, and I, I still want to keep videos coming out of previous printers, right? Like the Evolution has only had one video on it, and I do need to make some more videos on it as well. I don't want to just rush a printer out or send a printer out. Not that the Evolution was rushed out. We had a fair amount of people beta test that printer thoroughly and stuff, but I'd like to make more content on it, answer more questions, explain more things on how it's built, and that type of thing. So, um I'm going to try and do more steady videos on individual printers as they come out. Hopefully the Rook 180, as I start redesigning it, there'll be more and more videos. I'll do CAD videos on it and there'll be much more content per printer. Of course, I am also working on a website. Uh, finally, it's starting to come along pretty well. I'll be showcasing that off pretty soon. That's going to be a great one-stop web pipe page you can go to and find all the printers that are active. So it's a great tool for someone who's wondering what printers are currently being developed, what printers have released, what, what is their status, um, all the links for them. So very happy with uh, how that's coming along. But that's kind of all I had for, for today, everyone. Um, again, I appreciate everyone who's supporting me on Patreon. Uh, a lot of that goes a long way. I'm putting it all back into the channel here. Um, I promise I am going to eventually have a camera and a proper mic. But right now, basically, that those funds are going to more printer parts and, 
and all that kind of stuff. So I appreciate everyone who's doing that. And um, of course, if you buy anything on my mini factory, like the Evo, or of course this comes with the Evo, the Fortress, there is a tip page. So if you don't wanna support me on Patreon, you can just go to my uh, creator page on Mighty Mini Factory and you can send me a tip, buy me a coffee, whatever. Um, it comes directly to me via PayPal. It doesn't go through my Mini Factory. So if you want to support, that's uh, great ways to support. Um, if you just want to like, share, and subscribe, that's completely fine as well. So thanks everyone for watching and I'll catch you all next time.